squishies. Welcome back to another vlog. This is Dirty Pair OAV episode 3. We're not afraid of divine judgment. It's like magic. Um, this was fun. Uh, it's been way too long since I've watched Dirty Pair. Uh, and I really enjoyed this one. Uh, humor level was low, but there were some fun action sequences, and some neat tricks employed by the stage magician slash god, which is essentially what it was. And that's what's being referenced in the title, that what god is doing is less like sorcery or whatever. Um, it's not miraculous. It's pretty much just stage magic. High-tech stage magic, but stage magic. Um, and, I mean, I like the approach it takes. This is a pretty, this could be a very stereotypical, like, Star Trek style, oh, the primitive inhabitants of the planet, and the their more advanced ruler who, you know, manipulates their superstitions, yada, yada, yada. But it's more complicated than that. Um, their lives, while oppressive, unquestionably, they, they have that hallmark of oppression uh, that women have to cover up heavily, um, regardless of environmental standards. I mean, obviously, if you're living in a frozen wasteland, everybody's got to cover up heavily. But, no, this is a modesty thing. Uh, they, they call Kay and Yuri adulterous whores when they see their scandalous outfits, which are, you know, are what they are. Uh, and... At the same time, they are genuinely living in a peaceful world, at least as far as each other are concerned. Um, it's just that quote-unquote peace is maintained by horrifying, devastating, arbitrary, murderous judgments by their god. Which, honestly, it doesn't even matter if that's a, you know, ascended human who decided he, I'm assuming he, was a god and uploaded himself into the controls for the weather control network, which seems to be basically what happened, or some kind of powerful alien, or a deity, which the difference between a deity and a powerful alien is not entirely clear to me. Um, I mean, my anarchism extends to the supernatural. Uh, I don't think any entity should ever have non-consensual power over another. Um, you, and I believe that if such a situation exists, then the ruled inherently have the right to judge and overthrow the ruler, regardless of who or what that ruler is. If cows could organize and form societies and overthrow their farmers, then I would be all for them doing it. Uh, if ants could organize and form societies and overthrow humans, I would be in favor of them doing it. Uh, power is not a measure of worth when it comes to leadership, which is the closest thing to rulership that I will acknowledge. Um, that 
necessarily comes from the consent of the led, the ruled, whatever. Like, doesn't matter if you're a deity. I didn't vote for you. More importantly, there wasn't an election. I mean, if there had been an election and I lost, I'd be unhappy about it, but at least in theory, the aggregate consent of the inhabitants of the universe were being respected. But as it stands, nah. Um, I mean, some of these laws of physics could use some serious improvement. Uh, we really should have, you know, a revolution followed by free elections. Obviously, I am kidding. But, largely because I don't believe there is any form of cosmic government. If there were, then I would be for its over overthrow. Um, so, convenient for me that I don't. Uh, regardless, um, I do feel like this is a slightly more nuanced take than the typical Star Trek where all atheists in the future take, in part because these are technologically sophisticated people. Um, they have weather control satellites. Um, they just choose to live in a particular manner. Uh, someone then takes advantage of those choices to institute an oppressive regime and start murdering people, but that doesn't mean that those choices are inherently bad ones. Uh, just means that there's an, you know, a known vulnerability in them. Uh, that happens. They, they're far from alone in that. Um, at the same time, I like that, you know, K struggles to accommodate or deal respectfully with this culture, and Yuri kind of tells her off for it. Um, most of the time, obviously, I'm a big K stan, but in this scenario, I think it both makes sense for K to have that attitude, because she tends to be the more quick to judgment of the two, and for her to be wrong and called out on being wrong. Um, because, again, it's not the regular people that are the problem. It's the church hierarchy. Which, can I talk for a minute about how fabulous they looked? Um, like, that was just a great look for evil future space church. Uh, the outfits they had with, with that were a little bit of bishop in there, a little bit of, like, traditional nun, a little bit of space, like, combat armor. Um, very distinct elements that somehow managed to blend into something that was, like, reasonably menacing, while also being the right balance of austerity and ornamentation to feel like religious authority might manifest in that way. Uh, it was really well done. I love also the, like, literal space church, the shrine that looks like a cathedral and just launches at one point and docks with a space station. It's just visually really well done. I mean, the visuals on this show are often really good uh, for, you know, an 80s show, but that this episode particularly struck me visually. Other things I really like, um, I really like the weapon that the one priest was using, the, like, micro-thin invisible blade that was creating the appearance of his prayers, like, slicing through buildings. Um, 
And I really like that the quote-unquote God believed its own bullshit. I think it's too easy to write a cult as having a conniving manipulator as its leader, as opposed to a conniving manipulator who has genuinely convinced themselves of their own rightness. That, to me, is both more realistic and more interesting. Um, because... evil is almost always convinced that it's good. Uh, that's kind of how it happens. So, I like seeing that depicted. And it also adds a little bit more complexity and nuance to the character who is, let's face it, kind of flat. Although, again, another fantastic visual design with these, like, you know, on the one hand, definitely there was a cross shape to it, and kind of a suggestion of flame, but there was also something bat-like and insect-like and demonic about it. And it was just, a, again, aesthetically great. Um, yeah, so all in all, a good episode. I enjoyed it. Um, really impressive visuals, decent story and thematics, not a lot of humor. But the OAVs so far in general have been less funny and a little bit more action-y. And I'm okay with that. Um, it, they're making it work. I think that's about it. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Patreon for early access to vlogs, essays, let's plays, and more. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.